and elevate. Anybody glad to be in church? Come on, can we put our hands together? Man, that was that ain't gonna cut it. Anybody glad to be in church? Come on, let me hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so good to be with you guys. And man, can y'all just help me real quick and show some love to the worship team and how awesome they did? Come on, can you give it up for them? They do an absolute incredible job, and I may not say it enough. Man, we just love them and all that they do. And can we give it up for all the amazing volunteers that make Elevate happen? Come on, can we do that? This stuff don't just set up on itself so you can come in and join church. I thank everybody for their time and their efforts. And, uh, man, I just want to give a big shout-out to my boy, Drew. Was that not an amazing story? Thank you, my friend, for your friendship, your inspiration in my life, and all of us today. I think, how many would say you needed to hear that story? Anybody in the house? Well, if it's your first time, my name is Brandon. I'm the lead pastor here at Elevate. We're so glad you're here. I need everybody's help real quick. We are one church, two campuses, and we got our Harris County Jail campus watching today. Y'all help me and show them some love. Hey, guys, we love you. Oh, come on, make some noise. Guys, we love you. So glad you're here, and everybody else watching by the airways, it's going to be a good day in church. Can I get an amen? amen? Now, I will let you know, I am aware that the Rockets play at 2.30. So if you can dig deep, I can preach quick. Anybody with me? Come on, y'all with me? All right. Come on, yeah, it's all right to admit, hey, we can talk Jesus, but we got some business to take care of in game seven. Come on, how many know the anointing is on the bearded one, James Harden? We need him to come back. So, uh, hey, if you got your Bibles, you got sermon notes in the middle of your aisle. We're going to continue our miracle series as the rain comes down. It sounds like the rain's coming down. How many say that's a beautiful sound, huh? How many take a nap right now? Don't do it! I'll come get you. Man, oh man, oh man. If you got your Bibles, turn to John chapter 2 and put a bookmark in Ezekiel chapter 36. John chapter 2 and Ezekiel chapter 36. Is it all right if I kind of just go into a teaching mode today? Is that all right? Really feel pretty passionate about what I want to talk about today. Before we dive into our text in John chapter 2 to set up this sermon, I need you to celebrate with me a little bit because of you and how you give to this church allows us to support the mission field of prison ministry and jail ministry. And just the last three days, we've been at a prison where we did two female prisons. I don't have a picture up or I'd show you, but we put up a big tent and met in a chapel or another. But in three days, we had over 3,200 ladies come to hear the gospel of Christ. And better than that, over 1,600 gave their lives to Jesus and made it Lord. Come on, celebrate, elevate. Is that not why we do what we do? Amen? How many know it's all about Jesus? John chapter 2, continuing this miracle series. How many know that we believe in a God who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he is still in the miracle working business. Can I get an amen in the house? Y'all got to help a brother preach a little bit today. Y'all with me in the back? Yeah. All right. In the front? Yeah. All right. All right. Here we go. John chapter 2. Very familiar story of scripture that we all know. But we're going to talk about the very first miracle of Jesus. How many know that everything Jesus does is strategic? Am I right? He could have had any kind of miracle to kickstart his ministry, but there's a reason why he picked water to wine as his miracle. Let's let's read this and set this up. John chapter 2, verse 1, it says this. On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. I want you to remember where it was. It was in Cana in Galilee. We're going to bring that up at the very end. Jesus' mother, Mama J, we call her Mama J in the house. She was there and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, Jesus, they ain't got no more wine. And Jesus turned to his mama, Mama Jay, and said, Woman, why do you involve me? I don't know why, but that makes me laugh every time. 
What if your teenage son said, you told him to go make his bed, and he looked to you and went, woman, why do you involve me? I mean, it would have been grip ball real quick, yeah? Hey, you better, we brought you in, we can take you out. Get to your room now and mow the lawn. Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come, but notice how Mama Jade didn't even notice it. Didn't even, that didn't even phase her. She said, she turned to the servant and says, do whatever he tells you to do. I can just see Jesus going, Mom, I said, all right, Mama, all right, Mama. That's just how I read the Bible. Is that all right? I'm sorry, it's just kind of weird. Verse six, check it out. This is a very key verse in today's message. Nearby, you should underline that, that word right there, nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing. Each holding the 20 to 30 gallons, Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water and fill it to the brim, to the top. Everybody say to the top. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it over to the master of the banquet. So they did so and the master of the banquet taste of the water that had been turned into wine he did not realize where it come from of course you didn't you've been drinking all day bro so the servants who had drawn the water knew then he called the bridegroom aside and he said everyone brings out the choice wine first and the cheaper wine after by the way I want to point out I skipped over he said he did not know where it came from but it said the servants knew how many understand it's a servant's heart who always sees the miracle first he goes on to say, but he saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in the Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory. In other words, it was the kickstart to his miracle ministry. And his disciples believed in him. Could the very purpose of the first miracle of Jesus is to attract us to actually believe in who he is? Today, I want to talk to you about the topic, if you're taking notes, is simply this, the miracle of relationship. The miracle of relationship. Y'all ready to go with me today? Come on, let's pray. Jesus, do it. Amen and amen and amen. The church said amen. Come on, give it up for God's word one more time, will you? Y'all thought I was about to get all spiritual, man. I told y'all we got a Rockets game. All right, so. The miracle of, some of y'all too tied up in church, man. Y'all need to loosen up a little bit, yeah. How many are ready for a Rockets win in the house? Yeah. Yeah. How many Clipper fans? Don't do it. Don't put your hand up. All right. Here's the deal. The miracle of relationship. If you were to find what a miracle is, a miracle is an event which may seem contrary to nature but it actually signifies an act of God when he reveals himself to man. In other words, just saying that the Bible used nature instead of bypass nature to bring a supernatural miracle. How many know that there's a difference between the natural and the supernatural, am I right, when it comes to a miracle? But God, you could very easily say that God loves to use the natural things that are around us to bring a supernatural miracle in our lives. Are you following me in the house? And so you could say the definition of a miracle is God using our natural surroundings, whether it's good or whether it's bad, to bring the miracle that we need in our life. But it is amazing, would you agree, church, that we tend to take our surroundings and our circumstances as the reason why God has not brought us the miracle. But yet the very place you're in the very thing that you're going through could be the very place and thing that's going to bring the miracle that you need. Anybody with me in the house? How many would agree, though, that natural obstacles, somebody say obstacles. Natural obstacles tend to get in our way of a miracle taking place. Anybody ever experienced that? Maybe it's a Maybe it's a bill, maybe it's a hospital report, maybe it's something. How many agree that there tends to be a natural object that seems to get in your way for a supernatural miracle? Anybody in the house? Am I the only one in here? Man, what's up? Anybody with me? Yeah, let me know you're here. All right, come on. 
I know. Maybe y'all saving your cheer and your excitement for the Rockets. It's all right. Can I tell you this? God loves to use obstacles. He loves to use obstacles. You could say obstacles are the soil of opportunity for a miracle to be birthed. God loves to take a natural object that is blocking the miracle, but use it to bring the miracle. We see, we saw the object of the Red Sea, and what did he do? He brought a miracle. He split the Red Sea so the people could find their freedom, right? We saw the obstacle of a few loaves of fish and a few loaves of bread, and all of a sudden, he, had the, he took the obstacle, and he brought the miracle, and he held the largest fish fry in history. How many want an after party and elevate with the fish fry? Come on, somebody, yeah. It's going to happen someday. Who knows how to cook some fish? Anybody? Come on. All right. It's going to happen. God loves to use obstacles that are in our life. Here in John chapter 2, we see Jesus start his miracle movement with an obstacle. You see, before Jesus came, there was this gap of relationship between man and God. You see, God would use certain, pro- there was an idea of it, but, but God would use certain prophets, speak to the prophet, and then they would come to speak to you and me. And God said, I got to reach this world. The world's going down. Things are happening. Sin is growing. Sin is expanding. I need to reach the world, and in order to reach the world, I got to find man. And so God said, hey, in order for me to do it, I need to, but I have this obstacle of relationship. In other words, the greatest miracle I ever created has now become my greatest obstacle, which is people. So again, a miracle is when God uses the natural surroundings to bring a supernatural movement. Are y'all with me in the house, all right? Told you this kind of a teaching, but how many know it's good to sit down and have a teaching every now and then, amen? We might get a little crazy, we might hoop and holler a little bit later, but but we need a good, sound teaching of the word. So he says, use the natural surroundings to bring the miracle. So Jesus shows up at the party and is like, what am I going to use to bring this miracle? So he's like, hey, they're partying. People drink at the party. Let's use some wine. And so he's like, hey, he told his servants, go get some wine. And he decided to use this. As his illustration. Now, here's something I've learned about Jesus, and I think you and you would agree with me, is that Jesus never does something that does not set the tone for what he's about to do next. I think somebody needs to hear that again because y'all didn't quite get it. How many know that when Jesus does something, it sets the tone for whatever he's about to do next? Can I tell you there's no coincidence that Jesus chose to pick this miracle? to be his come out story of, hey world, here I am. I'm about to go on my miracle tour. And I began to think about that. And I was like, Jesus, why in the world did you pick a miracle of turning water into wine at a party? Ain't nobody gonna remember it in the morning. What's the point? I mean, if you're going to have a coming out party, Jesus, and let the world know, hey, I'm here, why pick the simplicity of a water to wine miracle? How many know he could have healed somebody's blind eyes, right, and made the deaf ear grow somebody's leg or raise somebody from death to life? Man, that got somebody's attention. Walking Dead ain't got nothing on that. And be like, but how many would agree that made more of a statement saying, hey, who is this dude? But it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I can't help but understand, God, why did you use this miracle? Ain't nobody going to remember it. And then I asked myself the question, I apologize, just how my mind thinks, what if I were Jesus? What would I do? I want to ask Jesus, man, have you ever read a church marketing book? Bro, it talks about first impressions. The first impression you make, anybody with me, right? Business, church, ministry, anything. The first impression you make is what's going to win people and keep people. Bro, this ain't a good first impression. If I were Jesus, y'all, I'd be like, 
or get the water to wine, be like, hey, servants, go get me 50 buffet trays. Light them up. Tell the people to get in line, get, go ahead and take the lid, put it on the buffet. You say whatever you want, open it up, and that's going to be what you get. Torchy's tacos. Boom. Hey. Five Guys Burgers. Boom. Hey. Come on. in and out Burger. Boom. Because he always go, it works from the inside out. Cheesy joke. All right. So it's like, it's like man, boom, water burger. Boom, filet mignon. Oh, man. Hey. Whatever you want, you can have. And hey, by the way, servants, those 10 people that died last week, hey, go wake them up. They got to be hungry. Let them come get in line and they can serve everybody. Your world, my name's Jesus. I'm coming to your city. Get a hold of my agent, Peter. Hashtag Miracle Tour. I'm out. (laughs) Come on, somebody. Y'all with me in the house, yeah. Now that's a coming out party. Hey, ain't no, everybody going to know about Jesus now. What? You going to feed people and dead people walking, getting in line? Come on, man. Like, I, but Jesus, water to wine? What's the purpose? Are y'all following me, church? In other words, here's what you must understand. Jesus was not out to make a public impression, but he was out to make a statement to the impression of the heart. The first miracle to launch his miracle ministry, his miracle tour. He did not have the miracle. It was not designed to go after the physical. The miracle was designed to go after the heart. Because the greatest miracle of all is the miracle of relationship. Come on, let me know you hear me in the house. Are you with me, church? So, the water to wine illustration up here. You see, I got here a simple bottle of water you can get for like 50 cents, 40 cents, right? But each different water according to how it's labeled, has a different cost. You can have regular water. If you want to take it up a little bit, you get you some Fiji. Come on, somebody. How many like some Fiji? And if you're a real boss, you're going to go the vaults. You know what I'm saying, all right? I mean, this is like $5 a bottle. Snap. I got it on sale. I promise your tithe money is working good, okay? I'm not paying for $5 a bottle of water. So this water is here, but according to how it's labeled, lets you know the cost of what it takes to have. So I got the water and then got some wine and walked into Walgreens and I just had to get one to show y'all to let y'all know if you walk into Walgreens and you see this, I just want you to know our church, have y'all seen our church logo? Elevate Church, anybody? Hey, stand up right there, man. Look at, look at our, you got our church logo right there. Y'all see our church logo and all that? Yeah, boom, like, he puffing out like, ooh, he did push-ups this morning. All right, so, and so, <laughs> I like that, bro. You see the church, I just want y'all to know, y'all walk into the store and you see this bottle of wine, we did not start a winery, all right? Y'all see, I just want y'all to know, your tithe money is not going to a winery, all right? Just, it's just for y'all to see. I thought that was hilarious when I walked in yesterday. But then we just got some natural wine, water to wine. Y'all heard that story of the pastor, the evangelist? He had a tent revival down the road. He was a little bit late, so he's speeding down the highway. And all of a sudden, an officer pulled him over. The officer said, sir, what are you doing? He said, sir, I'm an evangelist, and I'm on my way to that tent down the street to minister. And he said, sir, if you're a minister, you know above all people that you need to abide by the laws of the land. He said, yes, sir, I know I'm sorry, but I'm just running a little bit late. He said, what's that thermostat in there? He said, sir, it's my water. He said, because I also sing before I preach. The officer didn't quite believe him, so he said, give me the thermostat bottle. So the officer grabbed the thermostat bottle, and he took a drink. And he said, sir, this ain't water. This is wine. And the preacher said, Praise God, he's done done it again. You know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's all, it's all there. Come on, y'all need to laugh a little bit in church, yeah. 
<laughs> water to wine. Y'all with me? Say yeah. yeah. You could say we are the water. Because it says in the word, John 7, verse 38, he who believes in me from his innermost being will flow with rivers of living water. We are the water. However, a bottle of water with no level, no label, is just water without identity. You could say we label ourselves based on how we see ourselves, or you must understand that religion and sin labels who we are. You follow me in the house. Now wine, wine if you study it, wine represents joy. In fact, we learned this at the Last Supper. There was actually four cups of wine that went around and the fourth cup was called the cup of praise. How many know about the four cups of wine? It's gonna be a cup of praise, you know what I'm saying, all right? It's gonna happen like that, but it's called, <laughs> it's called joy. So there's a reason, come on, are y'all following me at all? There's a reason why God used this miracle to come in and make a statement about how you're labeled does not mean you can't be saved. So we go on to read in verse 6. Look at verse 6 again. Verse 6 says this, nearby, somebody shout nearby. nearby. Nearby stood six stone water jars. The kind used, y'all remember the story? Mama Jay said, do it. He looked at the servants, Jesus said, and he said, hey, he looked close by and nearby were these jars. But notice what kind of jars they were. They were for Jews, for ceremonial washing. Now remember, we asked the question, Jesus, why this miracle, water to wine? Remember, his first miracle is to make the impression of the heart. So he grabbed These six stone jars, please don't miss this. This is probably the most vital part of the message, the the nucleus of what we're talking about today. He grabbed these jars that were used for ceremonial washing. In fact, if you study it in Scripture, these were used for religious washing ceremonies. It was used for religion. Can I tell you, friends, God does not make a mistake with how he wants to set the tone for how he's going to produce the miracle journey in his life. The very first miracle was not healing blind eyes, was not healing deaf ears, was not raising the dead to life, but his first miracle was to make the statement that say, hey world, I'm coming in to wash out religion and introduce relationship because the greatest miracle of all is the gift of relationship with Jesus. How many would agree in the house? Can I get an amen? Because it's amazing how we let religion and belief and sin label us. But God said, my first miracle is to get past the obstacle of relationship. Say, I'm here to kill religion and introduce relationship in your life. Come on, y'all with me in the house? We see this so much. God, how many know God uses illustrations, right? He used symbols and illustrations. He used a, a lamb, and even though some of the lamb pictures in Jesus are kind of weird, y'all ever seen that weird picture of Jesus? God, he's got like perfect head and shoulders hair, you know what I'm saying? Perfect conditioner and whole little baby lamb. It's like perfect. It's like it's kind of weird, dude, man, bro. And so he's got like a little baby lamb, and, and, then, and then we see the donkey and we see the cross. God uses symbols, his illustrations. He had this miracle to represent an illustration because wine represents what? The blood. We learned this at the Last Supper. That's why we take communion. <laughs> it's a couple of weeks, communion is going to be on a whole other level. What? All right, just kidding. I'm totally kidding. Come back. I won't get no hate emails on that. Here's the deal. God, there is a reason For God symbolizing turning water into wine because wine represented the blood of Jesus. You see, if you don't catch this, you're going to miss out on the power of a miracle because we believe that that sometimes we believe that it's just signs and wonders that are attached to miracles. 
Can I tell you, we believe in signs and wonders, amen? We believe God's a healer, right? He can raise the dead. He can open up eyes. He can open up ears, man. He can bring us five guys when we don't have it, baby. He can bring us a rent check when we ain't got it, amen? God is in to the signs and wonders, but he didn't start his ministry with signs and wonders. He marked his miracle ministry saying, hey, the greatest miracle is a relationship with me. Because Mark 16 tells us, preach the gospel. Those who believe will be saved and signs and wonders will follow. Friends, the greatest miracle is a miracle of a relationship with Jesus. Because guess what? When you got Jesus, you got the miracle maker, you got faith, and with faith, what? Miracles happen. The greatest miracle of all is the miracle of relationship. Verse 6, look at verse 6 again. You remember when I told you to underline the word nearby? Somebody shout nearby. nearby. It's no coincidence when Jesus was looking to perform the miracle, he looked with what's around him. Y'all do realize that the miracle is always closer than you think it is. Because Jesus uses what's around him to bring the miracle that you need. So if you're not seeing the miracle, can I challenge you today, what's around you? But then he turns and he says, the servants were close by as well. So it's not just what's around you, but how many know it's equally as important as who's around you? Because who's around you, in other words, there's an old phrase, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Just as much as what's around you is who is around you. God will use the things that are around you to either see the miracle or you don't see the miracle. It's amazing, don't be intimidated or miss the miracle that will come through the hands of somebody else. We see this when Jesus fed the 5,000, right? He gave it, he blessed it, and he gave it back to the disciples, and they distributed it out to the people. It's amazing how when we need a miracle of God, we get into our spiritual Christian cocoon, And we're like, hey, don't talk to me, don't text me, don't Facebook me, leave me alone. I'm going to isolate myself, waiting on God to move, baby. I'm starving, and I'm waiting on God to move. I won't eat. And here you are starving yourself, driving yourself crazy, and everybody else around you, when you are here for nobody, when you don't realize God spoke to somebody two weeks ago through the miracle and the gift of relationship that's coming to bring you exactly what you need. Who's around you? What's around you? Then he says what? Bring them to me so you can fill it to the brim. It's amazing how we want all of God, but we only bring half of us. Isn't that what we do in our country today? Tragedy strikes. All of a sudden we want all of God, but yet we want to pull the prayer out of schools. We want to take Bible out of schools. We want to take God out of everything. Can I tell you, it's amazing how we want all of God when we need him, but when we don't need him, we only give him half of us. My question to you is simply this, the greatest miracle, that's why God used this miracle saying, hey, if you need a miracle in your life, The first miracle is a relationship with me because if you stay full of me, you stay full of my word, you stay full of my worship, you stay full of my prayer, guess what? I can go and make things happen. You got me, I'll bring the signs and I'll bring the wonders. The greatest miracle of all is the miracle of relationship. Come on, is anybody getting anything out of this today? Hello, it's a... A little bit different than the norm, more of a teaching message, but then he said what? You save the best wine for last. This is my love-hate relationship with Jesus. You remember heard that phrase? God's never late, but he ain't ever early either. Come on, anybody with me? <laughs> he's never on time, but he's always... All the time. It's like, it's like, God, man, what's up, bro? Man, I needed you like three weeks ago. Anybody with me in the house? You know what I'm saying? I, he said he saved the best for life. Isn't there something powerful 
about how the ending is always the beginning. I don't think it's a coincidence that the beginning of Jesus that he marked his ministry was an exact parallel of how he ended his ministry on the cross because the ending is always the beginning. And at the edge of giving up hope, at the edge of when we want to stop, how many know it's at the edge when the breakthrough usually come and the miracle usually happens? Can I encourage you, friends? It feels like it's no more, but stay filled to the brim because he has saved the best for last. Can I get a big amen in the house? Woo! Got a little fired up about that one. Hey, as we close this thing out, there's three points that you must understand that comes with the gift of relationship with Jesus. Come on, anybody want to know what it takes? When you say yes to Jesus, this is what you get in return. Come on, how many want all of Jesus in the house? And if you're here, maybe you're saved, you already know this. Maybe if you're only half-hearted, maybe you're desiring to have a relationship with Jesus. Can I tell you, if you're questioning at all, should you follow this man named Jesus, I'm about to give you three answers to say yes. Because the number one thing when you say yes to the miracle of a relationship with Jesus, you can look at it in Ezekiel chapter 36. Y'all remember what I had you put a bookmark there? Look at Ezekiel chapter 36, and it'll be on the screens, verse 25 and 26. This is what we get. Man, this excites me. Does this excite anybody else? Man, Jesus is the answer to our everything. You preach Jesus, things happen. Ezekiel 36, 25 through 26 says this, when you receive me, then I will sprinkle clean water on you. You will be clean, your filth will be washed away, and you will no longer worship idols. He said, it'll make you clean. Then he says in verse 26, I'll give you a new heart and put a, what does it say? New spirit inside of you. When you say yes to Jesus, the first thing that's gonna happen is he's gonna come in, he's gonna clean you up and clean you out from the top to the bottom, to the bottom, to the top. He's come to get you out and save you. You see, it's not when you get clean, it's when he cleans you up. He's coming in to clean you up. And he said, hey, I'm going to get rid of all your filth, all the mistakes, all the religion, all the sin, all the mess ups, all the different things that you're not proud about. He said, hey, I'm going to clean you up. I'm going to get rid of the filth. I'm going to erase everything. Because how many know when Jesus comes in, he cleanses you and he takes it all. He takes it all. He's going to come in to cleanse you. Second thing is, He's going to give you a new heart, which means new desires. The things that you used to desire, the clubbing, the alcohol, the drugs, the pornography, the sex, the pride, the addiction to work and not your family, the everything and anything. He said, whatever the desire you had that kept bringing you back to the place that you did not want to be. He said, when you receive me, I'm going to clean you up, but I'm going to give you a new heart with a new desires, with a new calling, with a new purpose, and you won't desire the things of what you used to be, but you'll desire now the things of what you can be. And then he said, I'm going to put my spirit in you. Whew. The spirit of God means the power of God. He said, I'm going to clean you up. I'm going to give you new desire. But then now I'm going to give you the power to say no when you need to say no. The power to say yes when you need to say yes. Because how many know wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Is that not good news? The miracle of relationship with Jesus. He going to clean you out. If you tore up from the flow up, he going to pick you up. You going from the penthouse to the outhouse to the outhouse. To the, it don't matter. He going to clean you out, give you a new heart, give you a new desire, give you a new spirit. What is Jesus trying to say again through this as we close this thing out? He says, hey, I'm here to remove the label. To remove the label of sin. 
to remove the label of religion, to remove the label of guilt. He said, I don't care what it costs. I don't care what the price is. I'm here to take over because I need you to let all of you go so that I can fill all of you up. Because it doesn't matter what's around you does not define you, but it's what's in you that makes you who you are. So you come to Jesus, you empty all of you, and guess what? He's ready to bring you some joy. He's ready to start celebrating. Come on, church, you can help me out anytime now. He's ready to throw you a party. Have you ever thought the very first miracle of Jesus was parallel with the last miracle that ever took place? It was water and wine, which was water and blood with the first miracle. Y'all follow me? On the cross. <laughs> when he was stabbed and pierced in the side, water and blood came out. Can I tell you, it's no coincidence. He said, hey, I took the 39 lashes for the 39 diseases in this world. Hey, you better believe it. I want to come and heal your body. If you need sight, I'm going to bring it. If you need hearing, I'm going to bring it. If you need new uh, if something in your body, you need marriage, healing in your relationship. Hey, I'm going to bring it. But don't forget the greatest miracle of all is a miracle of relationship with me. Jesus is the answer to you everything. Remember when it said he went to Cana and Galilee? So y'all thought I forgot. You remember that? You know why that's so important? It's the only time that he ever went there. And it was on the farthest northern part of his ministry career. He went out of the way further than he's ever traveled to start his ministry. You know what that means to you and me? I don't know about you, but that excites me. It's the fact that it doesn't matter how much I screw up, God is willing to go, Jesus is willing to go to the outermost limits of my life and my problem and my situation to let me know that I love you, I believe in you. Come on, church, and I desire a relationship with you. Let's stand together. My challenge to you as your pastor, as your friend, is do you have this miracle living inside of you? You need a breakthrough from addiction. You need a healing in your body. You need a healing in your prayer team. Come and join me. You need a healing in your finances. You need a healing in your marriage. It doesn't matter what it, what it may be. I feel led, man, I feel strong in my spirit right now. There's, there's somebody in here, you need a gift where God needs to heal your hearing. I believe if you hit this altar, I believe God's going to do it. Can I tell you, God, man, I feel that so heavy. I don't know who I'm talking to. You may not be deaf. I don't think you're deaf, but you're losing it. You're ready to get it back. How many know our God is still in the miracle business? Can I get an amen? I don't know what miracle you need, but can I encourage you? It'll come when you first make Jesus your miracle. Every head bowed and every eye closed. How many would say right now with nobody looking around, Pastor B, I need Jesus. Shoot it up. Shoot it up and keep it up. Maybe you've been half full. You're ready to get full all the way to the brim. You ain't been to the brim, but you're ready to go. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can put your hands down. Here's what we're going to do. Prayer team is up here. Don't leave yet. We're going to worship for just a few minutes and close this service out. But here's what I'm going to ask. You can go ahead and start coming while I'm talking if you want to. But if you raised your hands, go ahead and get out of your seat. Start coming forward. But if you need healing for anything, you need prayer for anything, you need a healing in your body. If I was talking to you about your hearing, can I tell you, come on, let us pray for you. Let us believe with you. Whatever it is that you need prayer for, I believe that if you come meet with Jesus, you come nearby, you get near to him, come to the altar. Church, can we agree that God is going to do some miraculous things right now? Can we do that? So if I'm talking to you, you need prayer for anything, come hit the altar. We're going to pray with you and let's worship before we leave. Heavenly Father, 
we glorify you. Daddy God, we thank you. We pray right now in Jesus' name, you begin to stir the hearts of everybody that is in here. If they need you, Jesus, they run to the altar. If they need a miracle, Lord God, they run to the altar. Father, whoever it is that needs healing in their hearing, Father, we declare healing in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray right now that a miracle working God is on the move. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor for it. Thanks again for joining us today. If you've been impacted by any way by today's sermon, this ministry, we would love to hear about it. Email us your story at mystory@elevatepeople.tv. If you would like to help support this ministry, please go online to elevatepeople.tv, hit the donate tab, the giving tab, and help us continue what God is doing here at Elevate. We love you so much. Thanks again for joining and have a great day.